So one of the new features that was added in SketchUp 2025 is an AI texturing feature that has a ton of potential, but is a really a great tool right now. In this video, we're going to dive into that. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. Okay, so make sure you stick around to the end of the video because I've got some feedback on ways to make this tool better and I'd really love to hear your opinion on if those would actually help some of these issues. And so the first thing you need to understand is the way that textures work in a 3D modeling program. So a texture is basically a repeating image that's applied to a surface. It repeats over and over again. And so I've applied this brick material to the surface. Well, notice how if you really look at it, you can see how it's repeating the same image on this surface. So you can see repetitions of the brick right here, the brick right here, and the brick right here. But if you break this up properly, you probably wouldn't see it because this texture is seamless. So a seamless texture is basically a texture where you can't see the seams where the image repeats inside of a three-dimensional space. And so when you download materials from modern material libraries, those images almost always are set up as seamless. However, and these are some photos that I took when I was just out walking, um, just to kind of give you an idea, when you just bring in your own photos, what happens is you run into tiling issues because these textures are not seamless. So you can see it right here where there's this like nasty seam between one repetition of the image and the next. And so this gets especially bad when you have things that either aren't straight up and down or so like this is a brick wall picture that I took. And so you can see how it doesn't tile very well at all inside of the 3D space. And so this varies and the visibility varies depending on on what kind of stuff you're trying to do, right? I've got this retaining wall in here and this image of the retaining wall is tiling really bad. And so this can happen a lot when you're creating textures from your own images. So the other place where this shows up a lot, and we're gonna go back to the interior of our building real quick. The other place where this shows up a lot is say that you wanted to pull an image of a tile material or a flooring material off of a website. And I took an image of a black tile and I just snipped it. And so when I snip it and then I try to apply it to the surface, notice how you run into this issue right here where it tiles really bad, right? Like this doesn't look very good at all because it's just like repeating this rectangle over and over again. Well, what this tool in SketchUp does is it will, when you click on this button right here, it will try to generate a seamless version of that image um, and apply it inside of SketchUp. And then it will also go through and it will generate PBR maps, right? Because I don't have any maps associated with this tool because it's just a snip that I took off of a website. So if I click on the button with this texture selected, what it's gonna do is it's going to try to change the diffuse map, um, which is basically the texture map of the image. And it's also going to try to generate those um, PBR maps down below and apply them to this image as well. And so notice with this particular texture image, it actually did really well. And I'm gonna bump the size up so that we can actually see this. So this actually did a really good job with these hex tiles in here of making this a seamless texture. So that's actually pretty cool when it works. Um, and you have an image that wasn't really working anyway. And then you can see how it also came in here. And let's go ahead and like make the material section of our tray a little bit bigger. It also generated a normal map in here and an ambient occlusion map, which highlights the dark areas in here. And we would probably want this to be a little bit smaller, but overall, this has done a really good job of generating a PBR material that's seamless inside of SketchUp. And so when this works, it's really cool um, and it's a big time saver. However, there's some big problems with this tool that I think could be fixed with some changes to the way that the tool functions. The way that the tool is set up raises some issues for me as well as the actual execution of the tool itself because there can be some problems with the way that you use this. So first off, you have to look at the use case of this tool. So what are you trying to do with it? I find for me, mostly I'm not necessarily trying to take an image and make it seamless. Um, I find a lot more of the time I just want to generate those maps. 
right? So say I was to select this concrete right here, all I really want with this concrete, because the texture is set up properly, and I bring in a lot of 3D warehouse models, the texture is set up properly, and all I want it to do is generate the maps in here. I don't want it to change the texture itself. And so all I really wanted it to do is I wanted it to give me this normal map, so that this looks bumpy. I wanted it to give me the ambient occlusion map, so I can highlight the dark areas. And I wanted it to give me a roughness map that's going to adjust just how much this is going to reflect in order to make this look more realistic. I don't necessarily need it to change this texture map. Um, and so what's happened here is we've basically tied two functions into one button that I don't have a lot of control over, and I'm not a massive fan of that. Now down here, this is not a huge deal, but let's try running it on something like this wood material right here. So when I click on this, it's going to run it, and instead of just generating the PBR maps, it's going to actually change that material. So notice what it did is it merged this material together and I no longer have those vertical seams. But the vertical seams were an important part of the way the material was tiling in here. So this has changed my diffuse map in a way that I don't want when really all I wanted it to do was give me normals and ambient occlusion because those affect the way this is going to render. Okay, and so that brings me to another problem with this. So if I jump over into my in model section right here and I go look for this material, right? And I can scroll down, right? Or you can see how it had a little thing on it until I clicked on it that looks like the little AI button. So this is basically showing me that it's applied AI to the material. But the problem is my original material is gone. And so what that means is that means this is actually destructive. It's gotten rid of the map that I had before and replaced it with the new map. Well, that's fine, except AI is unpredictable. And so because AI is unpredictable, what that means is that means my original map is now gone. And if I want to bring it back in, I can't do that um, because I don't have it anymore. This actually happened to me where I worked for a little bit and then I had a bug splat because usually what I do is I'll do a control Z. And I'll undo it. So when I undo it, you can see how I get my old material back. But if your SketchUp model crashes or you lose it, you lose that material completely. So notice how when I redo this, this replaces that old material with the new material. That's a little bit of a problem for me. I would much rather it kept the original material and generated a new one because AI is so unpredictable. And so the unpredictability of the tool is another problem. And I understand that AI is early. So I, I get that this is going to get better over time as the models they're using are going to get better. But I've got these images right here. Well, if I go through and I use AI on all of them, you can see how it works great on the hex tiles. But for this object right here, or for this material right here, it changed the material. This doesn't really have the alternating tile images in here that we had before. So it's changed the material. And then over here, it seems to have even more problems with the geometric tiles like this. Now, I don't have a problem at all with the fact that the AI doesn't always get the textures right. Right, like that's not a huge deal. That's something I kind of expect with AI. What's missing here is there's no ability for you to go through and you to like change a seed or make any adjustments or anything like that. And there's also no way to, to access the old image file that you used over here. So what we have is we have a tool that you click a single button and you have no control over what's happening. So I'd love to see like a seed slider or something like that. Understanding that's maybe not necessarily the way that AI textures are working right now. But the problem is I have no control over this and I can't edit a prompt or make any changes to try to get this to be a better result. And even with something like this, it might not be a massive deal, though that would represent a pretty big change to your design. But sometimes when you get other things, right, like I took a picture of this wall, which granted is probably a little bit nonsensical in this situation, but it's something that I took and I placed on this surface. Well, when I run this, it goes through and it just selects one part of this image and tries to tile that over and over again. So you can get really odd results with the portion of the tool that's supposed to actually generate um, this seamless texture. Right, And it actually did a pretty decent job of taking one piece of that and making it a repeating brick texture. But if that's not what I wanted, I'm a little bit stuck. So the case I'm making here is not that this should be removed, but that it should be a separate button. We need a button 
over here to generate the PBR maps and a button over here to generate the different uh, texture map that's going to be seamless. They need to be separated because a lot of the time I want to keep the original image the same, but I just want to generate those maps. Okay, and so let's compare this to a feature that you can find in D5 Render, which basically does the same thing, right? There's an option where you can select a material, but there's a button over here to AI generate your texture maps. It's going to generate your normal roughness and other texture maps based on the base color map. But the thing about this is when you run it, it doesn't change your initial diffuse map. It's going to go through and it's going to generate those other maps in here based on this image file right here. And so I'm going to drop a light in here just so you can see this a little bit better but notice what that did is that generated a normal map over here that generated a roughness map which is going to adjust how much this is going to reflect and it adjusted an ambient occlusion map what it did not do is change the base material map inside of d5 render it left that alone and just generated the map separately and so the other issue I have with this, and again, it comes back to an issue of control, right? Is this is generating these maps, but I don't have any way of like getting to them and making any changes to them. So like you can see how down below you could delete out the map if you don't want it to be in here, right? You can take that map and you can click on the delete button. But if you click on this button right here to replace the roughness map, it doesn't actually take you to wherever this image was generated. So I don't really have a way to like, access this. I'm not sure where this is going on my computer. I could probably go find something. I don't know if it lives in the SketchUp file or where it's stored, but I would really like to be able to access these PBR maps in like a third party uh, software or something like that so that I can make changes to them and adjust them. Um, Cause it would be really nice to be able to get into that normal map or the roughness map and be able to actually make changes to that. Cause a lot of the time you want to like up the contrast or whatever. Um, so being able to access that would be really nice as well. Okay, and so to me, there's multiple parts of things that I think need to be adjusted with this tool in order to make it something a little bit more usable. So the first thing is the AI Make Seamless needs to be a separate button. So we need to have a button over here for Make Seamless. We need to have one over here to generate your PBR maps. Having them both be the same button just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Like, oh, Architectures is a great example. At the moment, there's no way to actually like bring in the architectures maps without going through their website and downloading them and bringing them in manually. That may be something that's added later, but at the moment, there's no way to do that. So I would like to be able to bring in a material. So just pick a material, bring it in and apply it to a surface, and then just use a button in order to generate those maps so that this looks better. Right now, I have to click on the button and it's going to actually change the diffuse map itself in kind of a generative way that I don't necessarily want. Like this material was already seamless. Um, I, I didn't need it to go back in and make an adjustment to the material. So that really needs to be kind of a separate option. Second, the generated materials probably need to generate as a separate material rather than replacing the material that we already have in here. Because from a destructive standpoint, that's actually very frustrating for me to have to go track down this original material and bring it back in whenever the AI changes this. Okay, so part three, we really need control over the way this generation happens. Because like right now, for example, I have no way of telling this to go back through and run this differently or to adjust it differently, right? These are never supposed to be uniform tiles, but that's kind of what this has done. And I don't have any control over the way that generation is happening. So it would be nice to have some sort of control over telling it what to do with the materials when it's adjusting the diffuse map. And finally, these generated maps need to be accessible, meaning I need to be able to get in there and get to them so that I can open them up in a Photoshop or something like that and make adjustments, um, uh, especially in the case of things like roughness maps, because I really need to be able to get in there and kind of adjust, adjust the contrast of that image in order to dial in the result. And a bonus would be instead of having the button up here, like I'd actually be fine leaving the button up here for generate a seamless texture 
up at the top, but I'd rather have the buttons down below. Um, so maybe a button right here to make seamless and then a button here to generate the roughness, normal and ambient occlusion, and then maybe one right here in order to generate them all. So something where I have a little bit more individual control over here, because a lot of the time I might have um, some of these maps, but not all of these maps. So being able to access them separately, I think would be really cool as well. So generate roughness, generate normal, generate ambient occlusion. All right, so that's kind of my opinion on this particular function. I think it's super promising. I do think this is a good road for SketchUp to go down. It's one of my favorite features inside a D5 render when it comes to working with materials, but I think some changes need to be made in order to make it fit a little bit better in a workflow. But I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. What do you think about this tool? Do you think it's doing what you want it to do, or do you think there need to be adjustments? I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.